Okay, welcome back to part two of the decoding your needle chart. I know I said in part one that I can go over 15 minutes or whatever, but uh, it wasn't YouTube's fault. It was my recording device because I maxed out the memory. So, cleared all the data off the phone and we're fresh to go again. So, in the previous video, I had discussed how we look at your ascendant and at your descendant, and at your midheaven, and, or your uh, your midheaven and in your eye seat, so like the opposite of your midheaven. And I already said all of what those describe, so if you don't know, or you haven't seen part one, then go back and watch that. Um, I started to go into the placements of the planets, and how each planet represents different psychological factors in decoding someone's behavior. Um, and then I was just I was going into the ruling elements. So for that, I was giving the example of Taurus, which is one of my main ruling uh, deities, uh, because my ascendant and my sun sign are both Taurus. Uh, my moon is Gemini, but for the most part, we got mostly some Venus going on there. So it's very important to look at where Venus is in your natal chart, because that's going to be like. Like, they reflect. If you kind of think of, like, the energies coming down from above, or whatever, they kind of are, like, ricocheting off all of the different factors. And they come off of your sun sign and your ruling deities first, but then you need to look at where Venus actually falls in your chart. And there can be good placements or bad placements for that. Um, for example, um, if your Venus fell in Taurus or in Libra, well, then it's in like its ruling element, or it feels at home. You'd feel you have comfort in whatever of the signs as long as it's in a characteristic where it's at home, basically. So if you have something like uh, in opposing nature, so if your Venus fell in Aquarius, well, that's kind of detrimental. Uh, or if it fell in Capricorn, because they are both ruled by Saturn. And Saturn and Venus, Venus don't really mix that well. So when you combine them, that kind of can make things a little tougher in a natal chart. Um, and in what ways, it depends on the sign that it's occurring in, um, in with what ruling elements preside over that sign, the zodiac. And then, to go further into detail, if you want to look at the planets as being the psychological aspects and then the zodiacs being how we express them well the where we express them is when you look at the houses and to know the houses it goes continuous starting with your ascendant because that is and that's why you need to know your time of birth very accurately because that your ascendant is calculated with the sunrise and that is your first house and everything else is based upon that when it comes to the where. So, I'm not going to go through all the houses. You can look up the houses and all of their meanings. But, so, um, this is an example though. Um, philosophy is the centaur, which is the ninth house. So, if you have a lot of planets in the ninth house, you'd be very philosophical. And depending on which planets you have there, you will express that philosophical nature in those ways. And then you can look at, uh, you know, every house has its own uh, where, or like where you're going to express it, be it like in career, or uh, family, um, yourself, like the first house represents yourself, it's like the foundation. So. Um, if you have a lot of houses in the foundation, or in your first house, then it gives a lot of strength to your character, uh, which can be good or bad, depending on, as I said, the planets that fall there, and if they're in their element, like if they're in like their home base kind of thing. Um, yeah, and you need to look at all the different aspects and then combine them together, because they all have different attributes. and. Another thing you need to note for this is that 
qualities do not cancel out. So if you have something in your natal chart saying that you're going to be really kind and loving and compassionate, but you have something else that says you're going to be really emotionally detached and like aloof or whatever, those don't cancel or nullify. That they would both be present because we're not really dealing with numbers here. Like it is a you you do take a systematic approach to it, but because it's psychological in nature. They don't really cancel out. I, I more prefer to think of it uh, with the metaphor of paint or with light. And we're combining them all together and that makes the total of your being. But then if you want to like... Um, your total being would be kind of like the net results once the light or the paint have already been mixed together. But when you look at your chart, it's almost like you're looking at it before it got through the prism. So you're actually like taking it apart and looking at individual qualities that normally you don't get to see when you just, you know, if you, like even a psych, I think that in the future psychologists would really benefit from the application of looking at someone's natal chart because it really shows quite a bit of reflection of someone's character and uh, when you look at your natal chart it's also really important that you don't use things as excuses, so don't like be like, oh, I'm like that because I'm a Taurus. That doesn't justify you being stuck in your ways. What that does is that points out that, you know, you're kind of, you can be kind of stuck in your ways. So, learn to let things go, maybe, and try to, like, see other people's perspectives. And you can, depending on the person, and, like, a lot of people, when you see their chart, um, the qualities, there can be good and good and negative expressions, depending on like whatever placement you're looking at. But the individual, their free will, like there's nature versus nurture. So if they're if they want to fall really prey to like the ego, materialistic, vanity aspects of everything, then it's going to show that you know in their behavior. That'll just be obvious. But when you look at someone's chart, you can like know how to like self-progress, like how to how to aid yourself. Because when you know your weaknesses, then it's easier to conquer them compared to if you're just blind to them. Like like, and a lot of times, if you have like, let's just say, one of, uh, someone that you don't know off the street is just like, you know, you're fucking stubborn, you know. Well, you're not going to want it. You're going you're gonna to be like, you're a stranger. Your advice doesn't, like, mean anything to me. And, you know, if it comes from, like, even, like, sometimes, like, a best friend, you might just find that offensive. Why do you find it offensive? Well, maybe because it actually, like, has some vibration of truth in it that bothers you. And when you look at your natal chart, it doesn't matter if you look at your natal chart today, uh, three years from now, your time of birth doesn't change. So, like, the core fundamental, like, fingerprint of who you are isn't going to go away. You can either choose to, like, nurture that in a positive way. Like, you know, like, it's kind of like... I. That's why I think everyone should know their natal chart. Because, like, it's like, imagine you had a pack of seeds. But you don't know what the fuck they are. Like, when are you supposed to plant them? Do they need acidic soil or basic soil? Do they need light or shade? Well, if you don't know your chart, you don't know what you are. So how are you really going to nurture yourself in the best way? But please subscribe to my channel and like this and share it to the people. And uh, mwah, thanks for your time. And uh, I'll see you in my next one.